Do you remember doing lots of fun stuff in Math Club back in high school? I'm Lucien Wishick, and I want to talk today about the Game of Life Cellular Automaton. The way this works is that each new frame is determined just by some very simple rules based on the previous frame. So for any cell, if it had fewer than two neighbours, it dies of loneliness. If it had exactly two neighbours, then it stays alive. If it had three neighbours, then a new cell can be born. And if it had four or more neighbours, then it dies from overcrowding. And what we do is that we apply these rules to every single cell one by one. So for the first cell, we count up its neighbours and figure out what happens to it. Then the same for the next cell, then the same for the next, and so on for every single cell in the surface. Now the code to write this is pretty easy. You just loop over every single pixel, count up its neighbours and figure out its new state. And that approach works great if we're only interested in small simulations, like up to about 100 by 100 cells. But as soon as we want to go seriously big, we need some new technology. And the technology we're going to be using is the graphics accelerator card inside your computer, along with Microsoft's Win2D library for programming it. The first technique we need to learn is what's called a convolution matrix. So we start with a small, say, 3x3 three three matrix of weights and then multiply that around each cell on the surface. Like here in orange, we're multiplying it by the first highlighted cell. I'm using 1 for alive and 0 for empty. And doing this multiplication, we get the number 3. And that number 3 encodes in a single number the state of the cell and all of its neighbours. And what we do next is we put it into what's called a discrete transfer function. This is just a straightforward lookup table. Based on the input, that encodes how many neighbours the cell had and whether the cell was alive or not. And we can write up the new state that that cell should have just based on this lookup table. Now there's one trick for graphics accelerators. They like to have numbers in the range of 0 to 1. So we'll stick a divide by 17 in everywhere. But it's still the same. Now the code for this using Microsoft's Win2D library is actually really simple. When the app starts in our setup routine, we construct all the effects we're going to use later. Here you can see the convolved matrix effect based on the kernel of weights and the discrete transfer effect based on the lookup table. And we've wired them up so the output of convolve is fed as input into transfer. Now as well as that, there's one other thing I have to tell you about. The way we're going to implement this is we're going to have a surface. Let's call it surface 1, which will have some state. And this is the one surface that's being displayed on the screen. Then we're going to do a tick and use the convolution and the discrete transfer function to convert that into the new state. And then we'll display that new state as well. Now we're going to pull a switcheroo. We're going to call the right-hand one surface 1 and the left-hand one surface 2. And then we'll just repeat exactly the same process as before. The code for this is pretty simple. In this routine, TikTok, to perform those convolve and transfer effects, we're calling the draw image function. That does the effect how we wide them up, and it writes the results into surface 2. And to swap them around, it's a straightforward swap in code. Now, the source code for this is available on GitHub, and you can download and see the complete program. But I wonder what we could do with this kind of super fast graphics programming. One idea, if we have a screen full of static, we could sort out every pixel according to its color. Or how about we write a game which is based on cellular automata rules, like this one of falling sand. And to help you explore these things, I wrote a small utility called Effects Explorer. It lets you just play around, adjust the weights, turn on or off the discrete transfer function or the convolution matrix, and see exactly what they're doing with examples. And you know, one of the neat things is that this code will work super fast on all Windows 10 devices, from phones to tablets to desktops, even Xbox and HoloLens. Well, there we have it. I hope you had fun, and I'll see you next time for some fractals. Bye-bye.